welcome to another online business realm video. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button to stay up to date with everything we have on the channel. So we realize that a lot of you guys are very interested in cryptocurrency and a lot of our best videos have been cryptocurrency related. So inside of our traditional Freedom Friday video, we're going to go a little more in depth with some other areas of the cryptocurrency world. So what we're going to be looking at today is called MyEtherWallet.com. And on MyEtherWallet, you can store any token that is ERC20 based, which is a fancy way to say the Ethereum network. So this includes, of course, Ethereum itself and several other coins. So when you have a coin on the Ethereum network, as I mentioned, it's called an ERC20 token. It's specifically called a token. So that's going to become pretty important as we go through this process. So if you first go to myetherwallet.com, before you're even able to create a wallet, what it's going to do is it's going to walk you through a lot of different warnings. And it all revolves around this, which is what it says up here at the top. Don't get fished. The way this wallet works is if someone were to gain access to your wallet, there's no way you can ever get it back. So I personally, I don't know who the people are who get fished. To me, it's just go directly to the link every time. Don't go through an email. Just type in myetherwallet.com, and you really can't go wrong. And don't give anyone your information. Uh, obviously, that's something you, you don't want to do. You don't want to give up any of the vital information to your wallet, such as your private key or your password or anything like that. It's just common knowledge stuff. So here we are. We're creating a, a wallet. So you click New Wallet here, and then you create a password. So we're just going to make up some password for here. If you want to steal this wallet, you can. I'm not going to put anything in it. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so I created a password. And then what I want to do is I want to have a on Mac a text edit file or either on uh, if your PC use Notepad and just type in you know, whatever your password was that you just typed in. So you're going to want to save this file, save this like, you know, my ether wallet file. Uh, when you save it, you can save it under that name. If you want to be a little sneaky, you know, you can save it like, you know, school project or something like that. And then here you're going to want to store your password and your private key. So our password, uh, we just made something up. So we'll just say it's that's my password. And then the private key we're going to get here in just a second. So what you want to do is once you put the password in, click create new wallet. Now this is going to give you a key store file. So all you do here is click to download and then just take this file and slide over to your desktop. And now you've got that saved. Uh, I recommend backing everything up on your cloud for your computer. So, and, and also emailing it to yourself. If you email this file to yourself, as long as you, your email doesn't get hacked, uh, which would probably create a lot of problems for you, then you're going to have a version of this file on there. So I do that with most everything. So once you have that downloaded, go ahead and click I understand. Now this is your private key. So you're going to want to take this private key. You're going to need this. We're going to use this to access our wallet. So come over here and just copy that private key. You can print a paper version of this if you would like. So once you're done, you click save your address. So your wallet is created, but to get in it, you still have to use your private key. So there are a couple other things that you can use. Uh, some of these are the Ledger Wallet and Trezor. They are uh, hardware wallets, but it's a little more complicated than what I'm trying to show you guys today. Uh, you could also upload the file, the key store file you were given, but it says this is not the recommended way. The best way is to just type the private key in. And once again, it says this is also not the, the best way, but as long as you make sure you're on the right website, which to me is common sense, just copy that private key and you paste it here and hit unlock. And now we are inside of our wallet. So this is our address. If we wanted to send Ethereum or tokens to this wallet, that's where we would send it to. And over here, this will show your transaction history for Ethereum and your token. So if you just click this, it'll open up the Explorer, the Ethereum address Explorer. And you right here, this would show any 
action you've had, any transfers down here, your token balances. So when we say Ethereum tokens, uh, that's going to include things such as EOS, um, Quantum, Internet Node token. Probably the most popular one right now is Tron, even though the price isn't doing very well. A lot of people are interested in that one. So all of these can be stored here. So you can send any of these tokens to this wallet, to this address. They would all go to the same address. Now, you can't send anything that's not on the Ethereum network here, so you couldn't send Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Ripple to this address. So if you're unsure if your token is an Ethereum token or not, just look it up. It'll take a couple seconds to Google it, and you'll probably be able to find out pretty quick. So the wallet is pretty standard. There's not a super lot to it, except for one thing. So I want you to look up here at the gas price, 41 gigaway. That's what that GWEI stands for. So the gas, it's not petroleum. <laughs> it's not uh, something controlled by OPEC. This is basically the fuel that runs transactions on the Ethereum network. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So sending tokens here is no problem. But if you want to send your tokens to another wallet or to a, an exchange, for instance, then you have to go through kind of a, an extra step here. So let's put a private key back in, go into our account. Now you would put the address where you were sending it to. And right now it only says Ethereum for amount to send. If you have other tokens in here, such as Tron or EOS or something like that, they will pop up here. So it, it, this wallet is a smart wallet that understands what you have and is not going to give you options you don't have. So the gas limit for Ethereum transfers is 21,000. And if you read this here, it gives you that number along with uh, 200,000 approximately for tokens. It says the gas limit is the amount of gas to send with your tokens. The token fee equals the gas price times gas limit and is paid to miners for including your tokens in a block. Increasing this number will not get your tokens mined faster. And then it gives you the numbers to send. So if you don't know what GigaWay is, then none of that makes any sense. And if you are in this wallet, and let's say you only have Tron in here, and you're trying to send your Tron somewhere else, you're going to get pretty confused because it's not going to let you do it. You're going to try increasing the number, and you're going to be like me the first time I tried it and be super frustrated. So it, it's actually very simple. To send things on this network, you have to have Ethereum. The gas price comes out of your Ethereum. So my suggestion to you is the first thing you need to send to this wallet, if you plan on using it and sending things out back and forth, is just buy like $10 worth of Ethereum and put that in this wallet. And the fees are actually for the transactions are pretty low, but you have to have some money in here. So go ahead and transfer $10. A lot, of, a lot of exchanges won't let you send less than, let's say, $10 of Ethereum. So it's a pretty good number. And once you have that number in here, then you don't have to worry about transactions. Unless you're doing a ton of transactions on here, that $10 is going to last you a while. So that's my, my biggest tip to you using this is to make sure you get some Ethereum in here first. Because when I first started using this, it was kind of confusing and, and I didn't really understand why I couldn't send my Tron. I was trying to get out of Tron because the price was dropping. I know that... The common advice is to always hold or hodl, as cryptocurrency people say. But, uh, you know, sometimes just because you have a coin and it's tanking, you don't always want to hold it. If you think you can move it over to something else that's going to go up, then, you know, that, that's okay to do. So that's what the spot I was in. I couldn't figure out how to do it until I got a little more in-depth with this and, and began to understand the gigaway and how to make that work for you. So... I hope this review and this tutorial of my either wallet is showing you how to set one up. It's not terribly complicated. It's a little a little more intimidating than a lot of wallets at first glance, but once you get it figured out, it's pretty simple, very easy to use, very reliable wallet. A lot of people like it, and I, I think you will too if you use it. So one of the best things about this wallet is how you can hold any coin on the network on, on in this wallet, so you can have several different ethereum tokens on here together so i really like that instead of separating them into separate wallets so i hope you like the video please don't forget to click subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have going on on the channel and until next time get out there and make some money